digital cameras have been so good for the last 10 years that no one can honestly blame their gear for a bad photograph. If you're new to this channel, then the story so far is this. I had an equine photography business for 11 years, up until COVID, when I had to close the business. And to get me through 2020, I had to sell most of my working photography gear. Well, I'm aiming to start again in March of 2022, going back to work as a working photographer. So I've just spent one of those happy weeks where every evening I've been on eBay looking at cameras. And I have just bought the two cameras that I want to use for work in 2022. So the big question is, what did I buy? Maybe an R5, R6, maybe an R3, Z7, Z6, Z9 maybe. Or maybe I went used and bought a couple of D850s or a couple of 1DXs. Or maybe the old reliable Sony a7 III. First of all, I am not brand loyal. I don't care what camera system I use. It's pretty much dictated by the lenses I own at the time and whether I'm happy with them. A couple of years ago, I was shooting Nikon. A couple of D7100s and a D800E. A year before that, I was shooting two 1DXs. A year before that, I was shooting 1DS Mark III's. Before that, 5D Mark IIs. Before that, 5D Mark I. Before that, any number of strange digital cameras. And before that, film. See, all camera brands want to do is take money off me for stuff that I don't need. And I don't really want to give them any money, to be honest. I don't owe them any loyalty. I owe them nothing. What I need to do is maximise profit and minimise outgoings. But you've got to be able to do the job efficiently. So what camera do you choose for that? I mean, I need to be clear about one thing, just to avoid any uh, negative comments on the subject. If you're going to be a professional sports photographer, then you're going to need a fast, powerful camera, a sensor with a good, quick readout. That's for sure, and that's not going to be cheap. We all know that. I mean, how much resolution do you need? If you're a scientific photographer, or medical photographer, or maybe a landscape photographer, you'll probably want all the resolution you can get. But what I'm talking about here is your run-of-the-mill retail photographer, i.e. me. So when I talk about retail photography, I'm talking about things like portraits, corporate headshots, weddings, pets, you know, the sort of thing. Now, generally speaking, you don't need a powerful camera for this sort of work. Do I need a camera with really good video capabilities? No, I've got a video camera. I just want to be able to take good stills as quickly, simply and easily as I can. What resolution do I need? I need to be able to do print runs of a reasonable size, maybe up to 30 by 20 inches. Will I need to print larger than that? On the odd occasion, I may choose to do so for my private work. Well, having sold all my stuff in 2020 just to pay the bills, I'm starting again from scratch, but not quite from scratch because I now have the experience to know what I can get away with when it comes to camera gear. Now, I'll be honest with you, what I was going to go for was two 5D Mark IIs. Now, that is a very solid workhorse camera, perfectly relevant in 2022 for work. Nice image quality, good operation, and it shoots video, but I don't really care about that. Also came close to buying a couple of 1DS Mark III's because I have good memories of using those. Also considered the D800E, which was probably the highest megapixel count I've ever had. You see, pixel peeping is a bad, bad habit for a retail photographer. And I'll be the first to admit that I suddenly became a pixel peeper when I bought my first Sony, which was an A7R 36 megapixel sensor. I've got to tell you, I love the sensor on that thing, but I could not stand the camera. So I thought the only way here is uh, I'm going to look back through images over the last few years and see which ones really appeal to me. And the images that stood out head and shoulders above all other images, to me personally, were all shot on one particular camera. 
12 megapixel Canon 5D Mark I. Well, I knew a girl named Carrie. She was married to her Mr. Wrong. She seemed to crave the wild side. So Carrie and me got along. Well, she looked like a beauty queen. I'd do anything she'd say. But we got busted in a bar fight. And I was in jail the next day. Now I worked hard for money. But I worked hard for love. Jail time once or twice Until I'd seen enough Well, it's no one else's problem And you won't see me weep Cause I stand by the company I keep Now the thing with the 5D is It's one of only two digital cameras I've ever used That actually has a filmic quality. That's the 12 megapixel 5D Mark I and the 12 megapixel Nikon D700. Now I know there's going to be people saying, oh, how can you work with 12 megapixels? I mean, that's ridiculous in this day and age. Well, let me tell you, it will produce big prints if the image is well shot and well processed. And if you really need to do a wall size print, the thing is that Super Res software these days is so good. You need more data, a bigger file size, super res it because the general public are not pixel peepers it's only us photographers who are pixel peepers well that's a habit that i long since let go and i look at images the way other people look at them now does the image please me does the image move me does the image depict what i wanted it to depict well i know from experience and from work that the canon 5d mark one will do everything i need it to do am i speaking for everybody obviously not everyone's got their own needs and if I was going back to shooting equine action, I'd have probably gone for another 1DX. Be realistic about your needs. Knowing what I know now, I could have just kept my first two 5D Mark Ones from all those years ago, and I could still be using them now. <laughs> Learn by my mistakes, brothers and sisters.